Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Ancient Empires. This is a Total War Attila conversion mod which looks to go ahead and bring the Ancient World into the Attila campaign. I want to say a massive thank you to Batelius and the rest of the Ancient Empires team for one working on the mod, it is absolutely amazing, and for allowing me to show off the mod in such an early state. In the current build we're going to jump in and play as Rome, there is only really Rome which is currently done, and you guys will see why I mean that, because each faction has so much detail put into it, if Rome is anything to go by, that they're going to need time to actually focus on the other factions and really make them feel unique, as Ancient Empires looks to really kind of pay homage to the old Total Wars, where empire building was such an important important factor whereas I feel like in the most recent Total Wars it's more just about you know getting into battles and there's not really a lot of detail put on the campaign map. The way I go ahead and do this is through the building chains. There are so many different building chains you can go through and it's not just building the same six buildings in every single city. You can really diversify with different government types, different buildings as well as you know if you want to go more financial. It's just a whole range of stuff which we'll take a look at in this as well as that they focus heavily on revamping the way that armies consume money as well as the entire economical system which we'll take a look at. As I said this is obviously very much an early stage of it. In the current build there is only Rome which is about 90% done I think and Carthage is somewhat done but again you guys will see why I mean because there's so much detail that I feel like every faction will feel so unique and different instead of just like the normal copy paste factions which we're used to in most Total Wars. You know, normally like the major ones feel different, but the route they're going, I feel like every faction will feel very, very different uh, as you jump into the campaign. So what we'll do is we'll jump in and we'll play as Rome. We'll kind of play the first like turn or two, play the Battle of Zama, which is a pretty insane battle when we jump into the campaign. And then I'll leave it up to you guys. If you want me to continue on and do a proper kind of mini let's play of this, then if this video gets 500 likes, I'll go ahead and continue it on and show you guys more more of a mod just more of me playing whereas this video is going to be me kind of focusing more on just letting you guys know what about all the mechanics and everything like that so as you can see i really like what they've done here with hannibal and scipio scipio is going to be your first kind of commander your faction leader as you are in the midst of the punic wars and you start off with two armies raring to go so even straight off the bat you have i think it's something like a 70 unit battle scipio has something like 36 units and hannibal has something around about 40 units so you're already in Africa fighting hard against Carthage and it's just kind of a real nice boiling point so I feel like too many times in Total War games, you kind of start off with such a small impact of empire and nothing really happens. You don't really get any big battles, but I love the way how this mod itself really kicks you off, starts you at the forefront of a huge war and you have these two armies ready to clash one another and really go at it. Okay, guys, we are now in the campaign. The year is 202 BC. The Battle of Zama is raring to go as Scipio has landed 34 units in the north of Africa. Hannibal is ready to meet him with his own 40 stack so already i love the way the mod goes ahead and brings us to such a pinnacle part of the punic war the battle of zama you know this could go either way hannibal could go ahead and beat back scipio and reclaim his lost holdings in syracuse sicily uh, obviously sicily Sa uh, sardinia corsica as well as the southern regions in spain and kind of rebuild back the roman empire as i believe rome yeah rome at the start of the game only as scipio so if this army is lost hannibal is free to right rip through uh, italy because it's not in the best financial state right now however if Scipio is victorious he can kindly finally put out this devil that has been plaguing Rome for so many years defeat Carthage burn it to the ground salt it and then come home a hero so I love the way that you kind of have to fight this huge battle at the beginning of the campaign and that's kind of what we're going to be doing we're going to go ahead and just run through kind of like the first turn of this running through all the new mechanics and stuff and just you know ideal stuff that we would do in the beginning of the campaign and then fight this big old battle so make sure to stick around for that so as Rome as I said you kind of start off with a nice amount of territory obviously taking provinces in the past Punic Wars yeah, and having a nice amount of land to really push out and attack the enemy from. So one of the things you might notice straight away off the bat is obviously our economy. It's not very good at the moment you know and the numbers are extremely inflated compared to what we're used to in Total War and this is one to show kind of the sheer scale of your empire you know this isn't just some mindly you know tavern somewhere we're commanding a goddamn empire 
empire so i want to see these huge numbers out but when i'm building a temple it's not going to cost me 2000 gold it's going to cost me 40000 gold but obviously this has also been matched with provinces just providing you with a lot more money you can see rome itself produces 27000 gold um, and this again is very much tied to the seasons and i think this is one of the things that ancient empires does really really well as it goes ahead and ties the seasons heavily, not only to your economy, but your food. As you can see, we're currently losing food in the months of spring. However, this food should hopefully go up in summer. The fertility of regions changes throughout the seasons. So obviously in winter, you're not going to be producing as much food. That means that you're going to have to kind of try and build granaries in other provinces to help stockpile food for the winter months. And really in the summer, when you are producing a lot of food, your economy is going to flourish because you are then selling that food throughout your empire meaning you're going to make a ton more money so you kind of almost have to be wise about your empire building you have to think about oh well, this is summer i'm making a load of money but i'm going to make sure i have enough treasury and enough food to last me through the winter so you're going to see this number changing quite a lot and you can obviously make countermeasures to make that impressive um, and kind of improve the amount of food you have as i said for example such as granaries which give you plus 50 food and kind of really going down that tree however also something you may have noticed is a maintenance cost is pretty huge and that's kind of our massive money sink we have in the empire at the moment and this is to kind of represent the plebs and just other buildings which may not just you know like military buildings not so much but stuff for the forum you know this is used throughout your empire lots of people come around from from the city itself you know travel through this and it's going to take money to go ahead and maintain this building you know keep it a glorious bastion of the roman empire so, you know, buildings which are used in the public sector are going to cost you maintenance costs. For example, the aqueducts currently has a, a pretty big ma a pretty big maintenance cost. However, obviously, it provides us some, with some really nice benefits, which you can, uh, you know, obviously help out and, you know, kind of really expand and kind of right a lot of the problems you have throughout your empire. So, again, maintenance cost is going to be a pretty big issue. However, you know, a lot of the benefits of your buildings you're going to gain from building that is going to be worth the cost, the upkeep cost itself. As well as that, we also have trade. Trade has been completely revamped and buildings kind of provide you with a lot more resources as well as giving you a lot more money because you have so many more resources. So, for example, if we go ahead and hit up the Achaean League, we can see if they would trade with us. I'm pretty sure they would. Uh, yeah, they're going to trade with us. See, for example, we're currently exporting 14,000 fish to the Achaean League and they would be then sending us, obviously, 9,900 marble. So that's a large amount of resources. And this is kind of just show and put emphasis on trade itself to actually make trade feel pretty important in the game and if you for example lose a trade agreement or you lose a trade partner that's going to affect you pretty negatively as well as that they've made it so that trade is much more likely between empires which i always thought was just so dumb when you know i'd be giving someone 2000 gold and they're just like nah I'm, I'm good i don't want it i always felt like that was kind of dumb so i like the way they've kind of at least made it a bit more likely that people would trade with you Another thing is that armies cost a lot more money. If we go ahead and take a look at Scipio's army itself, it's going to be extremely expensive. And to tie that back in with the food, obviously in winter months, you're not going to be producing a lot of food. And when you send armies abroad into foreign territory, they're going to be starting to eat up a lot more food as well. So because of that, you really want to try and focus, obviously not to go to war in winter, unless you have a large amount of food stockpiled, you want to kind of sit around. Luckily, um, we are in spring, so we have plenty of time to kind of get this army in into a city and make it you know survive the winter itself i think as well that we also have to focus on you know building up sanitation buildings and obviously stuff like this also with building sorry i'm going to get into the campaign very soon i just want to try and make sure i kind of layer a ground foundation about all the new mechanics before we start running through what we want to do with the empire itself so they've also changed the way that government buildings work. For example, in Italy itself, they're going to have a completely different system and building chain to buildings out in Syracuse. Because buildings in Syracuse are very much a... Oh, not Syracuse, sorry. It's just because they've got it uh, right there, I believe. I oh, know somewhere on here they have it. I think it's down here in the south. Um, yeah, right here, you can see it says Syracuse, that's why I got modelled up. But yeah, buildings out in Corsica and Sardinia are going to be a different government type. Because this is not a Roman province, this is not an ideal Roman province, they're going to have a different system on how their government works. So each building is kind of almost like a route we want to go down with the province. Do we want to make this into a client state, which is what we've currently got it in right here? Basically, this we can still control it and build buildings here and everything like that. 
However, the culture won't really change because we've kind of made it into a client state. The, check, the culture is going to stay very similar to what it has now. This is obviously going to provide them with negative kind of public order bonuses uh, to our people because they are very much not our culture. However, it's also going to kind of counteract that because we're not forcing our rule on them people. They're going to like us because of that. They're also going to be giving us a ton of money. You can see right there, tribute, 1,200, uh, 12,000 gold income from political tribute because they are a client state but we can still do loads of stuff with them which is something i really like or i can completely decide that i want to romanize them and decide that yeah i want to kind of completely change the way the culture's working and you know just impose roman rule on this province which is something i really like and that's going to change obviously these roman colonies are going to have a different setup i can again kind of give them free rule in the region which is going to give me certain buffs and negative stuff or i can just impose you know military rule in these roman colonies which is going to heavily focus on latin culture you know giving us certain money in certain areas as well as providing us garrisons and allowing us to build troops so again i really like the way that they've kind of created these government types in not only in rome but there's also different ones obviously throughout different provinces where you can really just diversify what route you want to go down with with each province whether it is more of that client state and kind of you know, you're staying away laissez fair look at the government or if you really want to go in and just make everything Roman and make everything as, you know, as as Latin as you can. I think that's a really, really cool mechanic. So that's pretty, really, pretty much everything. Oh, we've also changed the way technology works so that technology very much kind of acts as laws you pass. So each technology is kind of like you enacting a law, which allows you again to really make a decision of, oh, I want to go very, very heavy on the tax rate and I can pass all these Roman colony reforms or pass all these you know, land laws and stuff like that. Or, you know, go heavily on the military stuff, passing all, you know, voluntary recruitment. And I, I feel like it's just, just stuff like this, which really goes ahead and helps you get immersified in the game itself, you know, with having, you know, the technology tied into passing laws and stuff, which I think is really, really cool. So we'll start off now in the campaign, start building stuff. So our major issue is money and food right now. So I think one of the things we're going to have to do, we have Napoli right here. Napoli has a forum in it. We also have an empty building slot right here. So I think what we're going to have to do straight away is maybe just build a granary over here. We could also maybe build a large vineyard, which would be really, really good. Produce us a lot of grapes uh, to sell out. So I think that's what we're going to do. Obviously, having that wine resource, popping out that vineyard straight away would be a good idea. We also need to try and deal with fertility. Um, we could also pop government buildings as well, which again, you know, kind of takes that kind of initial central building a little bit further and allows us to then decide even more what we want to do with the region. Again, kind of just giving you more depth in the building train, which I think is really cool. So we do have to go ahead and improve our sanitation in this region. We don't want plague to outbreak anytime soon. We're going to build an industrial aqueduct, which will give us some great bonuses to construction cost in this region, which I think is something we're going to, we might want as Rome is obviously always going to be a province needing to be upgraded. So let's go and pick that up. It's going to take us a long time, but you look at them buffs. Them buffs are going to be great. It also is actually going to cost us the most amount of money as well to upkeep. 60 grand might add up. I think for now, though, we'll just go and build it. It's going to take us 60 turns till we have to obviously enact that and kind of feel that. So I think we're fine for now. We could build buildings which obviously improve our research rate, which could obviously be great to pass these laws that little, a little bit quicker. But I think straight away, we either need to build stuff to make the peasants happy or just to improve tax buildings as well. So a slave trader could be great, reducing the amount of slaves cost us and stuff like that. Um, but I think the first thing we're going to go ahead and build is probably going to be this government building right here. Um, actually, no, maybe a forum would be a good idea. Or maybe just something to make the plebs happy. This does produce us a nice amount of money overall. That's something definitely we could do. I think a forum by would just be a forum in Rome would be good to go ahead and improve that. We also already have a temple of Jupiter here, which again is giving us some good morale on units. Down in the south of Italy, again, I think we need to start producing a lot more food. I believe these regions in the south go ahead and provide us with a ton more money. So farming as well is highly tied to uh, to fertility in a region. You can really see the bonuses and different buffs that units get. So each city can very much be tailored to what the city is good at, or you can completely ignore that and go with something completely different. So you can see that this has a base government in the city. I haven't really upgraded anything or improved any of the government buildings. So if I wanted to change that and kind of lower the native discontent, which is kind of the cultural differences, then I can do that. And obviously by improving my own influence here, my own culture here, I can go ahead and get that down. So I think getting food here would be a really important uh, thing. So let's go ahead and build some more farms right here. If we take a look at what region has more food, 
So I think, yeah, this, this is 90% agricultural. So this will get times along with my uh, farmland. So you can see there, the second line down, it says farmland four. And then that gets timed by nine to give me the amount of money and food I'm making, which is really good. So this will be a great place to stick it. Because so you can see it gives me three additional food per local fertility level. We saw the fertility level was at four. And that gets times by nine, I believe, because that's the amount of farmland I have in the area. Again, you can see that at the top the 90% right up there, 90% agricultural. So we definitely want to build farmland right there. Again, will give us a lot of food. I might also think about maybe building some uh, granaries around here. The granaries would be great at just giving me that extra bit of oof with my food. So let's go ahead and maybe build... Hmm, I don't really want to waste my building slots up there. Let's go ahead and build a granary... Oh, we don't actually have any money. Yeah, we've already, actually already spent all our money. I do want a public well here, though. So we'll go ahead and pick that up. Uh, I think that's all our money we can have for now. Obviously, we're going to go heavily indebted. Right now, maybe building this wasn't such a good idea. Wait, what did we spend all our money on? Okay, guys, so I realized where I spent all my money. It was on this industrial aqueduct. It costs us a lot of money, which I don't think we can afford at the beginning of the campaign to improve this. Obviously, it is a huge undertaking to build an aqueduct and improve it to what the scale I wanted to. So I'm not going to build it, I don't think, at the beginning of the campaign. Hopefully, they will change these numbers to be a bit more bright, because obviously, they just blend in right now. So you don't really know how much money this stuff is costing you. But yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and get, you know, get rid of the aqueducts and just spend our money improving the whole of my empire instead of just focusing it so heavily in Rome. So definitely improving the granary, I think would be a good idea. Uh, that'll give us 60 food, but also we could just also build another granary, which I think is something we're gonna do. We also probably wanna build a good government building here at some point, as well as improving roads could be a good idea as well. There's just so many really good things I want. I think though definitely making this, uh, making this very focused on being state controlled probably would be a great idea. Because at the moment is currently being hit pretty hard by by the uh, foreign culture. So yeah, let's go ahead and yeah, let's go ahead and pop this building. This will go ahead and give us a bunch more Roman culture as well as providing us with a nice garrison. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good idea. I and mean, we can always build a military building here a little bit later on. We do have wells going on as our aqueducts isn't really fully developed yet. And the well should hopefully go ahead and hit us into some nice little bonuses. So that's Syracuse done. Over here, we can see. So this is the question. The provinces of Corsica and Sardinia are very much unhappy with us. They're heavily, obviously, Carthaginian culture or African culture. So maybe we do go ahead and convert these guys. Maybe we do stop these guys from being more of a client state or a tributary state to being more Roman and trying to convert them. Because I think like, Corsica and Sardinia are going to be a pretty important province to us in the future. So let's go ahead and at least convert this. We can start things off maybe by converting these guys over to again being a lot more Roman. You can see this uh, this state is now under your control. But you have given them example from the tri uh, tribute. So basically they're under my control. They don't have to pay me gold. However they're forced to kind of follow my religion. Or you can kind of go for a more of an allied state, which would also help us out public order wise. I think I'm going to try and maybe make them a bit more Roman. Yeah, let's try and make them a bit more Roman, I think would be a good idea. So let's go ahead and force them to be a free state. However, they are going to have to follow my rules, but just not pay me any more money. So we're going to lose that bit of cash from them. You know, we're going to lose that 12,000 gold, but I think it's going to be worth it overall. So let's go ahead and pop that. Again, so you're going to be eating up a large portion of our money, but hopefully that will help out with the culture we've got going on right there. We also can maybe build another, uh, you know, another building there. Maybe get some more local fish would be great. Actually seeing how much that does provide us. I can't actually see. Yeah, a lot of these numbers aren't showing up right now. So hopefully that's something they will change as the mod gets more and more developed. But I think, yeah, maybe getting more fish here would be good. But we also maybe want to look at maybe building a temple here. Something to help urban dissatisfaction could also be great. Also, yeah, also just getting an Odeon. An Odeon would be great to help out with public order as we do have some pretty big issues there for now. Over in Spain, again, public order isn't great. We don't have a lot of healthy provinces at the moment. Carthagonova Carthago Nova could be a very important province to be holding up in the south. So let's go ahead. Um, at the moment, we just have it at a basic level. Do we want to try and make this more in our control? Or do we want to make this more of an independent state? I think we want to try and hold Roman, Roman affairs right here. So this one... As more of like Roman takes control. No, they both seem to do very similar stuff. So, oh yeah, they have different trees as they go on. Okay, that makes that's, that's very cool. They have definitely very different stuff as we go further on throughout the uh, in throughout the thing. So, what one would we prefer? Because we obviously want to make this more Roman probably than anything else. So, I think we'll go down the first one actually. 
Yeah, we'll go down this one, make it more Roman. So we have a nice little Roman hold in Spain to really push on. But as we still have a last, large amount of money left and we are going into summer, so a lot of our financial debt should be sorted out. We're building some granaries, which again should sort out a lot of our food problems. I think I want to build one more granary um, somewhere else throughout the empire just to give us a few more reserves. So let's go ahead and build a granary over in these provinces. Oh, we actually already have a granary over here, which is really good. We do also want to try and take advantage of that gold, though. So maybe building a gold mine here would be amazing. That will give us, I imagine it's going to give us a ton of money. We can't actually see because of the uh, numbers aren't there. And again, as I, as I keep saying, you know, this obviously is in a closed alpha at the moment. So, you know, it hasn't even gone into testing stages yet. And maybe just building a nice little granary here or even some farms. How good is the farmland here? If we take a little look, let's, uh, so this is this one. So 80% fur, it's got plus three farmland, which is really good. Yeah, so let's go ahead and build a nice little farm here, I think. So that's giving us down to 35 grand. I think that's enough empire building for now. And hopefully I've given you guys a good, clear idea of the campaign itself. I'm, I'm trying to just say it as clear as possible. Oh, we also need to deal with trade, obviously. Let's deal with trade. So let's go ahead and see who likes us the most. We obviously have uh, our, our defense. Oh, this, this is our client state, our tributary state. An actual tributary state, not just for government. Obviously, we would already have trade, I, I would assume. We can't trade with them, actually. But people in uh, people in Spain really want to trade with us, so we'll hit them up. And this will hopefully sort out our economy issues. Just trading, sending out all our resources we have. So yeah, we'll just hook up all these trade offers in the north. Obviously, again, you know, getting trade with certain people is going to annoy people. So I really have to kind of choose my trade partners. So Rhodes is always good. It kind of gives us access to this entire area. Crete want to trade? I don't mind trading with Crete as well. Because both of you guys are at war with Macedon. So kind of making a nice little alliance kind of trade route right there. The Achaean League as well. Do you guys want to uh, be friends? You're actually a tributary state of uh, Macedon fighting in the south. But again, that's a lot of money. We would be, you know, we're exporting a lot of fish out to them, which is good. Um, and again, this is you know, a really good way. Hopefully this will sort a, a lot of our cash. So we actually have some tributary states up here in Spain as well, obviously taking them and unifying them against the Carthaginians. So doing this would obviously help us out quite heavily at keeping these guys at bay, improving our relationships. So that trade should hopefully see a complete revamp. Yeah, our, we basically made 100 grand from all that trade, which will hopefully, you know, going into summer, not be too crazy. Uh, we could also obviously increase taxes if we wanted to. Try and like stick it up to full. Still wouldn't sort out our happiness issues at all, obviously. Uh, we also want to look at laws we want to pass. Probably going down the military route. Um, getting better starting and stuff, I think it's really important. And getting better melee experience, because we're already going to lose a lot of soldiers in the Battle of Zama, which we're about to fight. So we want to obviously have them on the back foot itself and, you know, and beat them back. I'm also tempted just to kind of maybe get rid of a few of these buildings. Maybe a few, maybe just leaving this to kind of chill. But it's not really that much money to convert this. What's my really expensive ones I've kind of stuck out on? Nothing too much, I don't think. I don't think there's anything I've really kind of... I'm probably upgrading this. No, not even that was that expensive. So what money? What am I really spending my money on? Um, again, it's kind of a little bit harder to tell because I can't see. Probably a building in Rome, right? I'm, I'm really committing a lot of cash to. Uh, not really, I don't think so. That building's fine for now. Yeah, where's all my cash gone? Obviously, my money is a lot. That's not even that much money as well. These buildings are quite cheap, if I'm honest. Okay, guys, so I had to do a little bit of maths right there and f figure out where my money went, but mainly it's just because I thought I had a million to start the game, whereas I only start off with 110 grand to begin. Obviously, in the summer, this is going to dramatically change, but I think we are ready. I went through and made sure that I had all my buildings. I continued to con try and convert Corsica and Sardinia. I went ahead and rebuilt more food buildings. I went ahead and got woodcutters down in the south of Italy to go ahead and provide us a little bit more resources to trade. Up in the north, I went ahead and continue to build my vineyard and my forum and over in the south of Italy, uh, south of Spain we're continuing to try and romanize it a little bit more um, actually we try to romanize this a bit more right yeah we did that right there and we're just continuing to let this kind of just prosper as it is but we are making sure that we do build our gold mine and a bit more food over in the south of Italy so yeah that's what we did there but I think we're ready I think we're ready for the battle of Zama so let's go ahead and send Scipio to engage Hannibal and get this battle started Hannibal is not going to be a coward he's going to hold firm Scipio himself gets some pretty nice buffs at the beginning of the game giving him a pretty big aura size I imagine Hannibal has some okay ones as well 
his military force and orders. I also noticed as well, actually, whilst I was messing around in the game, we'll jump into this and let it load whilst I'm talking. Yeah, so um, one of the buildings I was messing around with was the government building, and basically one of the options you could pick at was an ally, I think it was allied state, which basically means they're more of a, their own governing city in your empire. And that made you not be able to actually replenish units in that province. So it's kind of very interesting that you can kind of almost create your own laws within your empire. And I really like the way the team has gone, to, gone about that. And I've already mentioned it, but I think it makes it very cool because a lot of the times you can't rely on your, on your AI allies to really do much. So just being able to really diversify the empire throughout that province I think is really cool. So the Battle of Zamora itself, let's go ahead and go. We'll just start deployment, why not? There's a pretty gnarly hill right there, which I think we're gonna go ahead and have to obviously secure. On our front line, we have cohort. Uh, we then have Principes along with Astarte, and then some more infantry back there. We have a lot of skirmishers. So let's go and set up our army, uh, just a front line like so, would be dope. Then we'll have some more infantry. We'll kind of have the Astarte and the Principes just behind it. You know, normally the starting team of Prinky base would be kind of mixed in into one unit. But we'll go ahead and leave them there. Then we obviously have more of our spear infantry, which I guess will stick out on the flanks a little bit. Kind of go more traditional total war. Then we have a lot of skirmishes. So I'm going to stick a fat line of skirmishes on the front line. Like so, and then just have two in reserve to really dominate the field of battle. We have our Numidian cavalry, which obviously historically won us the day. Being very, very strong. We also have some Roman cavalry. So we'll probably just go heavy on the left flank uh, and then use our skirmisher cavalry right there. And then Scipio himself can just sit there. Scipio is actually in a Tiaria unit at the beginning. He's leading from the foot, so he's not actually a cavalry unit. I'm sure we can find Scipio as well somewhere here. I'm pretty sure he has a custom model, but we'll find that in the midst of battle. So our skirmish is there. Yeah, I think our army is ready, and I think what we're going to do immediately is take this hill to our left a bit more. Fire at will for missiles can so we'll push our army completely left. We'll make a big advance from left. So one of the things that ancient empires really try to do in the battle is they make it so that like running and getting exhausted in your armies is not a smart idea you really want to make sure that your army is fresh whenever you can because being exhausted reduces their combat efficiency massively so actually you kept paying an eye on their fatigue making sure that they're not you know fully exhausted and giving units time to rest is really important when it does come to winning this because you could have a, a superior legionary unit for example an eagle first cohort but if they're extremely exhausted maybe even a normal starter unit could beat them now that's something i haven't tested but that's just to kind of give you a bit of an example of what how the battle system works in ancient empires to really kind of pit you up against making sure that you make these tactical decisions when you're deploying it making sure you have reserves to send in and kind of pull out uh, exhausted units because a lot of the times when I personally played this you can actually pull units out of battle you can throw in a unit to kind of go over them and then retreat so for example if this uh, unit right here the missile unit was engaged I could send in another unit and once this unit was here I could then select this unit and pull it out of combat which I think is a really really cool way of approaching things They've also made battles last a lot longer as well, so I think that's also very, very nice. So what we'll do is we'll just select our entire infantry, and we'll just start approaching Hannibal and his Carthaginians. We'll obviously march our way over there, and whilst we're doing that, we'll take out a look at his forces. So obviously Hannibal himself has a large amount of soldiers here. He has 40 stacks, so we're definitely outnumbered. The balance of power is not looking great. Obviously, he has 6,500 men. We have 5,500. On his front line, though, he has a lot of, like, kind of weaker, ill-disciplined units, having a lot of mercenaries and stuff like that. You know, a lot of his Italian infantry, which he's picked up in his conquests in Italy. As well as his citizen militia hoplites and other units. And I feel like Attila just looks so much better than, say, for example, uh, Rome does. It really just kind of just brings it more into the modern age, which is great. Obviously, these African elephants are going to be a bitch to deal with. He has a huge unit of, what, 20, 36 of them. Wow. However, from what I remember, they're extremely hard to recruit, so that's going to be a difficult battle. So we'll just go ahead and triple speed it whilst... I mean, I could run towards them, but I kind of want to... don't want to do that. I kind of want to just let my men get there, you know, just rest. But we, I guess what we can also do is just select everyone, run them up to the front lines. Hannibal is simply going to reform because, you know, I attacked him at the end of the day, so he's very much looking forward to fighting this battle. So we'll go ahead and allow this to kick off. Letting our skirmishes run up first, kind of being that first little assault force. 
Now they're going to be taking a lot of stinger fire and stuff like that, but nothing too crazy, I imagine. So again, we'll just let our infantry up. You can see our front line's getting a little bit tired, but nothing crazy. They're just simply going to retreat. They also are in range of me with their slingers. Slingers have a pretty crazy range, but they don't really seem to do a lot of damage out kind of in like an extreme range. So again, we'll just advance our army a little bit as well. And I imagine this will see Hannibal really going into uh, an aggressive mode now. Because at the moment, he's obviously got the advantage. His slingers can just pick away at me, uh, ones which are shooting. You know, a few of these guys are blocked, but you know, a lot of them are shooting. So you can see a lot of this missile fire coming in. It's not going to be great for this unit, but we're not taking too much damage. The rocks are traveling very, very far. So we don't really have to worry too much about them. And again, I think it's time to just fully advance. Now, our, our line is not great, but we can send out our skirmishes, I think, first. So let's go ahead and just select our skirmishes, taking a bit more damage now. And let's try and prompt Hannibal into a nice little aggressive move right there. So we'll form up our skirmisher line like there. I think we are actually, you know, starting to force them up here as well. And we'll form up our battle line a little bit. Oh, yeah, we actually do have the elephants making their way up. So let's go ahead and harass our elephants. We'll send up the Numidians first, and we'll send this cavalry up here to try and, you know, do as much damage to Hannibal itself. Uh, to the elephants as, as much as we can. We also probably want to send these guys into an uh, attacking uh, defensive formation as well. Uh, what are you guys doing? Throw your javelins and get out of there. The elephants charge you. You're slaughtered. Oh, God, boys. Get out of there. I was not expecting you to go that deep. Skirmisher line itself can just continue to stay there. Maybe send a couple units over to his right flank again to help deal with the elephants. I mean, we are throwing all our peeler into the side and taking down a lot of these elephants to begin the battle. That's already sent them into a rampage. I think I want to continue to get this battle started, though. Kind of try and nullify the enemy missile advantage. So let's just send up our first line of attack right now. Let's be quite aggressive. So we'll send up our first line of attack whilst we're sending up our skirmishes as well. So I think once our skirmishers are in range, we should also encourage them to also come up. So let's send these guys up as well. The elephants are getting beaten back, and we're going to have to be very careful because they have some good cavalry up here. So we're going to dispatch a unit of our spears over to this right flank. The elephants have been routed, which is great news. They can obviously come back. Uh, a lot of the things that the uh, Ancient Empires team tried to do is they try to make it so that units do come back from routing. Why? Well, not like, like really often, not like Warhammer much, but... You know, it's very much more about the psychological effects of the battle itself. So let's go ahead and then push up these guys a little bit more as well. Our second line of defense. Yeah, we our Numidian cavalry is getting slaughtered there. They're not really meant for this long, drawn-out combat, especially against some elite units of cavalry right here, which are fighting us. We do have a nice little, uh, the other unit of Numidian cavalry, though, holding them in place, throwing their javelins, which is great. We also obviously have our big portion of cavalry, which we're going to place up here. Are you guys, all, you guys are not on skirmish mode. Come on, boys. I thought these, everyone was on skirmish mode. Not quite. So Hannibal is sending forward his unit of Iberian uh, Skitari. We can just run away from Membo. No need to commit too much. Let's, let's go ahead and pull back the skirmish line. Infantry line is making its way up, which is great. We've heavily engaged these horses there. Maybe try and do a nice little rear charge on them would also be kind of cool. Let's just bring back all our skirmishes now over on this side. A lot of them actually weren't blowing their load already. You guys engage there. Let's go ahead and have the first little kind of skirmish engagement. Sending up our infantry to try and deal with them. And I mean, I imagine our infantry is more than enough to deal uh, with that front line. So whilst we're also engaged, let's go ahead and send up these guys as well. Just advance them a little bit. Our second line of defense. No need to overcommit or anything. Whilst the rest of our infantry just continues to push up. We'll form a, oh, we can't form a Tessudo there, but we'll form a uh, nice little attacking Tessudo right there. I'll obviously give us some nice little bonuses, form up the infantry line very nicely, give us some nice shield defense. Oh, it actually does reduce our melee defense. We probably don't want to be in that, especially against fighting African veterans, who I know are a very, very strong unit. Spearman, we're victorious there. Get out of there, though. Hannibal's unit himself is right there. We don't want to obviously come into the negative side and fight Hannibal quite yet. Let's go ahead and set up these Principes and more elite Hastati units up there. Just get them to march again. No need to overcommit right now. And then the rest of our infantry can come up there. Kind of act as more of a second line. We'll take them off fire at will as well. I don't want these guys just over committing. So we're going to throw some good infantry there. Again, you guys be off fire at will, please. I want to save as much ammunition as I can. I think I'm going to go for a nice little aggressive push right here as well against their cavalry. I think I really want to try and break this cavalry and dominate that field of battle. I'll obviously throw up uh, Scipio himself. Get some more skirmishes as well. I think we'll push them on around the left flank. If you guys can, get the hell out of there. I don't really want to commit you guys if I don't have to. Okay, there's gaps ap applying in Hannibal's line. So let's go ahead and just continue to advance. 
Breaking a lot of these skirmishes down, which is great news. Yeah, these skirmishes are ill-defended right now. They are sending some cavalry in there to hit my skirmishes, but they're going to be getting hit by mine. I think now is the time we do try and go a little bit faster and try and hit into Hannibal's main line right now. Hannibal's very much trying to uh, to make it so that he has a lot of men in reserve and he can kind of use these guys aggressively. Oh, he's actually pushing my right flank heavily, though. Luckily, our skirmishes are opening up on them. Yeah, you guys just form up there and then we'll form a nice defensive test judo. They're taking a lot of missile fire, but hopefully that's okay. We have a lot of our skirmishes of our own. We're going to form a nice little defensive test judo. A lot, of our own, uh, a lot of our own missiles are coming in and actually hurting us, which isn't probably the smartest idea. But we'll push in some more. Infantry continue to go up in the center. Would be great. Yeah, you guys just clash into there. And we should have a nice little overlap here on the left flank. Cavalry should be winning there. We have all of this skirmish of cavalry there as well. Okay, we're going to need this infantry to really double time over here. I want to make sure we push heavily here. Again, trying to make sure I'm not using the same units to constantly keep pushing so units have time to rest. You can see Hannibal himself coming in here. Just some Nimidians here, though, and also more missiles. Yeah, a right flank might break. You know, completely be being surrounded by Hannibal himself, obviously putting not a great aura, and also taking missile fire is not going to be amazing. Hopefully, though, we can maybe try and scare off some of these missiles, because that's, I think, Hannibal's strongest uh, power right now, is having this such a huge missile advantage. I just can't get to them as we speak. We need this infantry to make their way around. My central lines are actually breaking a little bit. Let's get Scipio up here uh, to pop some nice little buffs. And I think we really need to start making some pushes here. Nice. Let's chase down some of these missiles. Would be very much needed. Uh, and also you guys just come around here. Lots of skirmishes. I think we need to try and break this flank as best as we can. Yes. Yeah, so you guys inv invade gauge that. And that will allow our cavalry to come flying in there. Perfect. One up there as well on that flank. So yeah. You guys engage that. Hannibal himself. I mean. Uh, sorry. Scipio himself is going to go get involved. You guys charge in bash. You know, you guys fire at will first. You will devastate them, spearmen. You guys fire at will as well. Okay, we need to be very careful not to get caught up onto these uh, missile units, but we can definitely just try and, you know, engage and push on. I should definitely hammer an anvil here. Hammer an anvil there. Try and route that left flank. Would be so vital. So just taking a glimpse of the battle. Hannibal is obviously beating me on this right flank pretty nicely. There's a lot of missiles coming in, and they're definitely doing their damage. My right flank here yeah, is not looking great. However, we have a lot of elite units everywhere else. And if we can just maybe apply a few more flanking things, we're obviously winning on the left flank a lot more. So yeah, you can see the huge routing going on in the center. And that's going to obviously affect a large portion of the rest of the Carthaginian army as well. Yeah, you can see we're, we're pushing back all these weaker infantry. Hannibal really went for that decisive hit on the right flank and we're making him pay. Now we are exhausted, but I think we have to push this flank ideally i would love to leave some of these guys to get kind of their energy back but as i said i think winning this flank is so important and we need to make sure that these men do not come back so let's go ahead and send in our cavalry to go deal with them we'll send this unit of infantry to help out there we just have a fresh unit of infantry we can also pile down that right flank our skirmishes are pretty much out of uh, ammunition cavalry have been engaged but they're numidian they're light horse they're not going to do great there but uh, yeah, we want to make sure this cavalry can come in and take care of these, skirt, these slingers. If we beat the slingers, I think we really win the day. This infantry has to come in there. Same with you there as well. And I might rest some of these more exhausting units. Yeah, you guys just sit back and rest. Just form up there, please. Yeah, you guys just form up there. Get your energy back. You guys are very tired as well. Just form up there. You guys, however, are going to have to keep pushing on. I cannot afford to kind of give up this right flank. Cavalry's going to go in after them slingers, which is perfect. You guys are smashing into there as more infantry comes in there. Yeah, the mass route is really coming into effect now as on this left flank. Nice, and Scipio is doing a great job. Yeah, take out these slingers. That's going to be huge. And Hannibal is now committing his last men. So you guys saw in that battle, Hannibal had his first line of attack, his second line of attack, and then his third line, his reserve infantry, which is something ancient empires have done in this game. And I think it's an amazing feat uh, of modding. Really, really good work there. You know, just seeing the AI actually using its reserve lines, because that helps. That obviously help, will help uh, help with the, the AI um, actually, you know, manage its fatigue. You know, not committing all the units at once, not exhausting them, is going to be great. You can see, though, we have smashed this right flank very nicely. And we want to make sure we send off our horses to continue to chase this. We have engaged some of the enemy horses right here, which is not going to be maybe too great for us, but we do have a nice little reserve unit back here we, we held back. All of this infantry is now getting its energy back, so we're going to continue just to push it up, but not kind of committed too heavily. A lot of our skirmishes as well can maybe be committed there. 
This unit's got his energy back again. But let's try and push up. I'll try and show you guys actually how you can get your units in and out of battle, which I think is really, really cool. So again, send, send some units to cavalry to go help out. And this is again one of the things, one of the situations that Ancient Empires I think does a great job at creating. It kind of forces you to think, do I push now? Do I commit my entire army to try and rout the enemy right now? Or do I hold some of it back? Do I rest it and try and beat back the enemy? Because as you can see, Bant's power is still extremely even right now. So maybe me committing my entire army, make, getting it exhausted and throwing it into combat wouldn't be a great idea. You know, maybe giving it a bit of, you know, a couple a couple minutes just to rest and get its energy back. You know, getting these guys back up to fresh dramatically improves their fatigue and their fighting capabilities. I think when the unit's exhausted, it fights at something like 0.2% of, you know, I think it's like 2% of its fighting capacity. So you can just see, you know, if you have a fresh unit against an exhausted unit, you're just going to overwhelm it. Just because of the sheer, you know, tiredness of that, that, that unit. So we're going to come in now, hit the flanks here. The skirmishes which have had been committed are being slaughtered. I think, there you go, Hannibal is not looking great right now. We have a nice little defensive test judo holding off against the African Spears. The balance of power is very much turning in our favour. And I think that's one of the things I also really like about the battle mechanics in this game. Is that it's not just solely about numbers. Obviously having more numbers really, really helps you out in the battle. However, you can win a battle with fewer numbers if you play, you know, if you fight a lot better, if you manage the exhaustedness of your units, you kind of just go for a general better kind of combat field, and you can really dominate the battlefield, and, you know, it's not too hard to do that. It just goes to show a, a more well-drilled army will easily beat a, a larger number, larger number, a larger number, larger army, if they are, you know, properly used. Let's try and pull this unit out. It might break, but I'm going to try and show you guys how the, the reserve thing works. So yeah, I've gone ahead. I've thrown in a unit to kind of take this assault, and I'm bringing out another unit. So I'm bringing these guys back to get their energy back. So you can really see how that's going to work in the campaign and in battles. Where you want to rest a unit. Maybe a unit has been fighting for the entirety of the battle, and you want to rest it. You can do stuff like that by committing a, a second line into the battle and bringing out your first line to then get their energy back, have a rest, and then throwing them into battle. As you can see, though, we smashed Hannibal. His forces did not stand a chance against the elite Roman legionaries. And you see, we didn't lose too many men. We only lost a thousand men. Because the main thing about ancient empires is routing units, if you can. Routing is obviously, historically, the main thing that went on in battles. However, you can hugely devastate armies and then just allow your cavalry to, to simply just chase these guys down, take prisoners, take them out, you know, use your missiles just to shatter these guys as they run away. And that kind of also goes ahead and, and shows heavily how the actual gameplay itself will go in Ancient Empires. However, this is obviously the start of the game. We're very much playing with basic ass units. So as the game gets more and more on into late game, you're going to have these elite veteran units who simply won't break like you're seeing right now. You'll have that sort of solid vanguard. Everyone might route around them, but the vanguard will stay true and hold the line and keep back and fight to the end, you know? And that's something I just love. I just love this mod. It just does everything I want from a total to war game having really in-depth building trees having awesome battles which actually make sense to how they work not having a unit run away and come back two seconds later for no apparent reason there's actually like method to the army and when units start to rout you know other armies just completely collapse Hannibal did lose half his army in that battle and because we managed to make him rout uh, we obviously didn't lose as many soldiers which was really good news for us and we're obviously going to have to use this you know this army to then push on to taking Carthage the sieges are also something very different in ancient empires sieges themselves cost you a lot of money to maintain obviously keeping a perimeter around the camp building siege equipment you can obviously have to be sourcing food from the local markets and stuff like that or just raiding and taking it so sieges themselves cost you a lot of money so you have to again be really tactical and ties in very nicely with your treasury and your empire management which i feel like a lot of the more modern total wars seem to have lost that kind of epic feel of you know not only having you know empire building and army building but both of them being so connected and really trying to play off one another at least i, I personally really really like that maybe i'm a bit biased because one i love the ancient empires team and mod and i also you know love this era in history and it just reminds me it gives me that nostalgia feeling of playing uh, the older total wars also i should definitely probably put this on my ssd as well at the moment it's on my hgd so that's why it's loading so slowly but uh, yeah we'll go ahead and jump back into a campaign map now 
So as you can see right there, we've gone ahead and defeated Hannibal right there. And tell this advisor to go away. A heroic victory it was indeed. So we have the option to obviously take on the warriors, you know, the people we've beaten and captured. We could kill them or we could ransom them for a nice amount of money. That would obviously affect our integrity pretty badly. Hannibal did manage to escape the battle. We're going to try to chase down and kill him, but we've killed a lot of his army. And I think we'll take on the warriors. This will lower our, our you know, our elite um, men. Like it will reduce their... Uh, What's Hannibal doing? I don't think too crazy cool. It will obviously reduce their, you know, their chevrons and stuff like that. However, I think it's better to have the soldiers to then push on Hannibal and take out the city. Now, the cities do have decent garrisons as well. I'm not sure if I can see it or not. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually quite tell me the, the garrison or will it? Oh, it will tell me the garrison. Oh, nice. I like how I've done that. That's kind of cool. So actually, uh, this place doesn't actually have a great garrison. Let's push on. Let's defeat Hannibal. He's retreated back to one of his provinces. But let's chase him down. And again, you can see that he has a nice amount of garrison. And his army wasn't too heavily defeated. It was routed, but it was still there because I didn't personally chase it down. I probably would chase it down a lot more. Uh, we can just probably auto-resolve this, though. Um, so let's go on here. Maybe let's go like a nice little bounce stance. And we'll push back Hannibal. He might even beat us. Luckily, though, we were victorious. Again, we'll take on the as much more heavy casualties. We'd obviously have to fight that. And again, though, a lot of the battles won't be mu as much like this as you guys are seeing. Now, this is obviously a huge battle with top-tier armies and top-tier units, at least at the beginning of the game. So that will obviously be very different for your normal average campaign. But Hannibal has been defeated. We pushed him back. And now it's a time just to continue to push on. Obviously, killing the garrison there allows us to, you know, occupy and take cities. I guess we will now occupy the city. Oh no, we should have raided it. We should have raided it. That would have given us so much more money. Our Imperium has actually gone up. Oh, we should have we should have raised it. Should have goddamn raised it. Oh, we'll, we'll destroy these buildings for now. Uh, we can't actually do that. Yeah, well, I guess we'll I guess we'll destroy the central building. Can we then? I'm such an idiot. I should have raised that. I would have sorted out all our economy issues. But oh well. So cool. I think that's going to be my first turn. We'll go ahead and end the turn just so you guys can get some good glimpses. I guess is there anything else I should really take a look at? Late spring in certain regions, some nice trade agreements going on. Uh, battle reports, if we wanted to see the battles, we could see there the sheer amount of men lost and won. We definitely lost a lot more men in that second battle right there, a lot more men. However, you know, it was nothing too bad. Hannibal killed in battle, perfect. Oh, I, should have, I should have raided it and sorted out our economy issues at the beginning of the game. Maybe if you guys get this video to 500 likes and I do that extra video where we do go ahead and um, you know, start a proper campaign on this, then maybe I'm going to go ahead and have to just raid this when we win the battle. Uh, that's for sure. So cool. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and end the turn. Let's just go ahead and see. Oh, we're bankrupt. We already know that. And governors. Oh, yeah, you can obviously also assign governors to get edicts. That's something I will do, but not, you know, we won't bother really looking at that. Edicts have been changed, though, as well uh, to, to kind of represent a lot more different stuff. So you do have kind of stuff like lower taxes, which will help public order, but reduce the tax rate, increase tax rate, which will obviously, you know, hurt public order. Um, stuff to convert people, sell slaves. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of new different stuff, or just total war, giving you less money but allowing you to recruit stuff. And I feel like that, that's like stuff like that is very much stuff that's in Paradox games, which just kind of, you know, oh yeah, definitely I want to convert this region to be pumping out soldiers because I'm at war I and mean, it would make sense to do that. And I feel like that's a lot of the things in, uh, in like Paradox games which do that, which total war don't. But I personally really like that a lot. So we'll end the turn quickly. We'll just see what a lot of the AI do. Nothing too crazy. And then I will. I just want to show you guys, you know, maybe the, the effect summer has and how much it changes our economy. Hopefully it does change it a decent amount because we are pretty heavily indebted right now. So in summer, you can see, yeah, look how much more money we're making in summer. Unfortunately, our food surplus isn't going great because we don't have that much food in reserve anymore. Um, we are producing more food, but our food reserve is kind of running a little bit low. So we need to try and get a surplus. I believe as you get a surplus of food, that food reserve does go up. And you can get more of that food surplus to go up through getting more granaries and stuff like that. I believe that's how that works. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that is how it, how it runs out. So we are still in famine, but you can just see the sheer amount of money changed right there. We went from losing 77 grand uh, to then making 200, you know, 220 grand. And it's a huge difference in summer, but obviously if we were to change to, uh, to autumn or to go to winter uh, Then that'd also really really affect the amount of money we're making So we have to just make sure we have enough in the bank and definitely sort out our food problems as well It should hopefully be sorted out 
once our new provinces are built and stuff like that so cool hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of first look at ancient empires i hope i didn't make the video too long and that i explained it well enough as i said in the beginning of the video if you guys want to see a proper let's play of this mod in its current state get this video to 500 likes and i'll be more than happy to do it um so obviously make sure to drop a like and a comment down below let me know what you liked about the mod let me know what you didn't like about the mod are you personally going to be playing it when it does get released i believe they were talking about maybe having the first release with roman carthage out and making it you know available in the next you know two three four months maybe uh which i think would be really exciting because just think of it think of the amount of detail rome has but you know having that for carthage as well all different cultural appropriate buildings and stuff which is something really amazing they're doing for this mod so uh just a massive hats off to them guys make sure to go over to the forums and you know let you know just tell them what a great job they're doing because for me personally this mod is amazing i love the battle mechanics i love the economic mechanics i love how everything just ties into one another and empire creation is actually fun again um and i just really really hats off with what they've done in attila which i know is such a hard engine to mod in so yeah massive congrats to you guys you're doing a great job and make sure to keep it up so yeah i will see you guys next time and fish out